Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today we're taking a look at this new Danganronpa trend. I mostly found out about it because I saw my friend Super High School Level Blaze reacted to a video about it. And basically the video is Danganronpa trigger happy havoc, but the wheel decides their fate. And this is by Arto Black X. So basically the trend is that you create a wheel using a cast from a Danganronpa game, and you determine all the major roles, like the protagonist, first victim, first killer, etc., at random through spinning this wheel. So the results can get pretty wild. But anyways, I saw them react to this video and I watched just kind of like the intro of it and I thought like, hey, this sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> Maybe I should make a video about this too. But another thing I thought would be fun is if I make my own wheel. It looks like it's like 20 pixels. But here it is in all its glory and we're going to do our own little Danganronpa spin the wheel game. But yeah, before we get into it, please do leave a like and a comment if you do enjoy this video and please subscribe if you like my content. That'd be pretty cool of you. And yeah, that kind of stuff does help me out a lot in the algorithm, so I'd really appreciate the support. And if you guys like this video, I think it could be fun to try it with some of the other casts from like Danganronpa 2 or V3. And I was also thinking I could maybe do it with um, Your Turn to Die characters, and that's why I got so over here watching as we kill our favorite characters. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about those ideas too. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. As for the rules of this game, we're just gonna kind of go by each trial. I am gonna do two victims for the third chapter, but other than that, I'm going to leave like the victim and the killer spin and I'm going to leave the protagonist in there because you never know when there might be a twist to where the protagonist um, dies or is a killer or something like that. So I say, hey, let's make this as chaotic as possible. So that's why I'm going to kind of treat it like that. I'm excited and uh, very curious to see what we get. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is going to be for the protagonist. So let's go ahead and do it. I am nervous. Uh, uh, uh. Chihira! <laughs> no! I was so close to it being Chihiro! No! No! God dang it! Why? Why is life so cruel? We can work with it. <laughs> we can we can work with it. So so Hafumi is the protagonist. Oh man, I need to look through Hafumi's free time events. I don't even remember them to be totally honest. Of like, what's your trauma dump? Let me let me read through it. Presumably, as a young child, Hafumi described himself as a mild-mannered boy who liked to draw and without a single friend. He apparently did not believe when people, mostly women, were genuinely kind to him. So much so that he would yell at them to leave whenever they attempted to talk to him and enjoyed doing so. So you could definitely use um, Yamada's kind of like difficulty talking to people, especially women, as a good way to like develop his character throughout the course of the uh, killing game. With him as a protagonist, I think it would be really interesting if they dipped more into that part of his personality. So if we saw him like lashing out at like Celeste or Mizuno, but afterwards, if we hear in his mind, like him being truly remorseful of how he acted or lashed out, or him maybe thinking like, of course they don't actually like you. They're probably just like patronizing you and they probably think you're like ugly and disgusting and stuff like that. I think there actually is a lot to work with there since you could make his protagonist's journey him gaining confidence in himself and realizing that not every person or girl who's kind to him is doing so out of malice and that his worst enemy was really himself and his thoughts all along. So, okay, who is the first victim? If it's a Fumi again, I'm gonna choke. <gasps> no! Bro, really? What? <laughs> no! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no way. No fucking way. What? What is this game? What is going on here? Okay. Okay, Afumi, I guess, I guess you're dead. All that development I just talked about in the trash, bro. Nothing. Nothing for you. I guess he's... I don't know. <laughs> Cause he just dies. He was a um a red herring. He's not somebody you would expect to be the protagonist in the first place, but he also just is apparently a red herring for who knows what reason. Goodbye, Fumi. <laughs> I guess you're gone. But she had a good run. You had a really good run. Actually, should I leave him in so then we can decide if it's like a suicide? I kind of want to see if it's actually gonna land on him again too. I swear to God, Fumi, if it lands on you again, I I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can't. I can't say what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna be really surprised. Okay, so it's Tagami who killed him. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good. I was like, is it just 
always gonna land on him. I was starting to wonder just because that was so coincidental. Okay, so, so Tagami killed Hifumi. Why, you may ask? That's a great question. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't freaking know. This is so fucking stupid. I can't come up with anything for this shit. What do I do so? <laughs> Tell me what to do. Okay, so let me get this straight. <laughs> you you started off Safumi, and then you just die out of nowhere. And so I guess hypothetically you won't find out who the killer is until you get to the trial. We will go ahead and roll for who is going to be the protagonist after Hifumi, since Hifumi unfortunately passed. <laughs> he was not a very strong protagonist. So who's the new protagonist? Let's go ahead and roll it. Come on, Jihiro, I know you can do this for me. <gasps> I was like, I'm okay with either of those. Hell yeah, we got Kirigiri as the protagonist now. Hell yeah. Yes. I am so happy. I hope you don't die again, Kirigiri. <laughs> it's like this game just ends up killing off every protagonist forever. So we got our protagonist again, Kirigiri. I'll go ahead and give her an Ahoge. Proud of you, queen. And so um, I'm just gonna leave it as an option for her to die just to see if we do get like a game where the protagonist just keeps on freaking dying because I kind of think that would be hilarious. Okay, so anyways, we got Hifumi dying first. Tagami kills Safumi. I guess because he just wants to get out, you know? I could see Tagami being like one of the first people to really want to leave, especially since he has the corporation to take over and all of the heirs that he had to duke it out with in order to gain control of the company. So I'm sure he's worried that if he's gone for too long, they may try to step in and take over the company in his place. So maybe he gets really desperate and he's like, hey, who's the easiest person to kill? Okay, Hifumi or Chihiro. I guess I'm gonna go with Hifumi for whatever reason there is. And so that is why he decides to kill Hifumi. And then Kirigiri solves it because she is a beautiful, perfect genius. And that's about it when it comes to that. Okay, spin number two. This is the second victim. Who is the second victim? Mm, Hagakure. Ah, <laughs> poor Hagakure. We have a winner. Okay, so who is going to be Hagakure's killer? No! No! No, not Chihiro! What did you do, Hagakure? What did you do to make precious little Chihiro kill you? You know, I'm still kinda on Chihiro's side. Oh no, I don't wanna see them get executed though. That'd be so sad. I guess we had to see Alter Ego get executed, but seeing Chihiro get executed would just be like a whole, whole new level of pain, you know what I mean? So the way that I picture it in this version, how like everything goes down, is Chihiro goes to the gym to get stronger, like um, they did in the original. But in this version, they like half commit to overcoming their insecurities. So they don't ask Mondo to train with them. They do it by themselves and they do it at like a really late time at night. So they think nobody else will come in. Hagakure enters. He's really freaked out because he's like confused. He's like, Jihiro, why are you in here? I thought you were a girl. And then he ends up backing into like a weight stand or something and maybe like a weight falls on him. And in this case, it wouldn't like kill him. It would just injure him a decent bit. And then Jihiro would see that, hey, Hagakure is already injured. And since Hagakure knows Jihiro's secret, which in this version they're planning on keeping a secret, Jihiro decides, hey, this is a good time for me to try to get out of here and decides to kill him. So the first, that their secret can remain a secret. And secondly, they have a pretty good alibi since Hagakure was killed in the men's um, locker room and nobody would really suspect Chihiro in this instance. That's kind of the best scenario I can come up for this. Now we're going to do the first victim of chapter three. Who's it gonna be, baby? And Kirigiri is still the protagonist. We love to see it. Oh no, Makoto! <laughs> Not my Nigiri heartbreaking already in the third chapter. Aww. Dang. That'd be really hard on uh, Kyoko if we keep them kind of like as a duo, you know? Trying to like help solve cases and stuff. Like maybe instead of Kirigiri being the best girl, you have Makoto as the best boy. But then he just freaking dies in chapter three. Oh man, that would be really rough on her. And she would definitely have to find like a way to um, keep going, you know what I mean? Okay, second victim of chapter three. Here we go. Leon. Okay. Okay, so now we have who done it? Who is the chapter three killer? Ends up being like Celeste again. <laughs> ah, no, is it gonna be Kirigiri? Ah, okay, it's Asin. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Don't play with my heart like that. 
Don't make Kirigiri kill Nagi. A lot of you guys know I'm Nagiri trash. But in case you didn't know, I am. That's just how it is. Oh god, this is playing with my emotions really badly right now. Okay, so it's Asahina who kills both Leon and Nagi. It'd be so interesting too if like her whole like cutesy kind of like airheaded thing was like a facade, you know? Oh man, if she just like blew up like Celeste too and you're like, whoa, first of all, like <laughs> the whole cutesy airheaded thing was just a front and now you're seeing her real personality is like manipulative and vindictive and stuff like that. Oh my God, just like chills. That'd be so cool. Leon's such a player too, so I could definitely see like Asahina using her looks in order to like manipulate him. If we, you know, totally change her personality for this AU, which for the sake of it, we are. She manipulates Leon with her looks into kind of like doing her bidding and promises him that, hey, we'll get out of here together. And so he kills Makoto first. And then afterwards she kills Leon because she doesn't really want to take him with her <laughs> after the game's all done and over. So yeah, I think I would stick with that idea. Having Asahina's whole cute, like um, adorable person Sona be like a fraud basically in this version. Okay, so this is going to be the um, victim for chapter four. Wow, that's kind of an interesting cast we got going on here. So we got Fukawa, Maizano, Sakura. Yes, Ishimondo lives, baby. We love to see it. Okay, so chapter four, victim. Let us go. Oh no. Do -do -do. Oh my god, that was so close! <laughs> I was like literally thinking, I was like, right when I hype up Ishimondo, one of them's gonna die. But it was, it was a close one. Okay, so Makuro dies. I'm guessing like in this version, especially since I just used like Makuro's um, regular picture, she's just gonna be herself. She's not dressed up as Junko in this version. Oh man, I guess she could kind of like lose her sanity after Makoto dies because um, it is like heavily implied in Danganronpa that she has a really big crush on Makoto. So after his death, maybe she kind of breaks apart and is able to be like an easy target for a victim. You know what I mean? I could definitely see that being the case at least, but let's see who her killer is. Maybe it's her, <laughs> we don't know yet. Okay. Oh. It is her! Oh my god! Oh no, that makes it really depressing now. Oh, Makuro. She wanted to be with Makoto. That's so sad. That does, like, explain it away pretty well. So I guess Makuro takes her own life because Makoto died and she just can't, like, deal with it anymore. Okay, chapter five. Victim. Here we go, baby. Who's it gonna be? Hey, Kirigiri's lasting a while, though. I'm proud of you. As I say it while it's about to land on her. Celeste! Okay, so Celeste is going to be the victim of chapter five. Oh man, no offense, Celeste, but I really don't want Kirigu to die. I've already lost one protagonist. I don't want to lose another. Now, who killed Celeste? Here we go. Um, Sakura, no! Maizano! Maizano killed Celeste. I guess that means Sakura made it to the finals, baby! Yes! <laughs> I love Sakura. Oh my god, Ishimondo made it too. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Nagiri died so Ishimondo could live. Okay, for now, I'm going to postpone explaining why Maizano decided to kill Celeste. And I'm gonna go ahead and determine who the mastermind is. That way, um, I can kind of figure out maybe more of what the motive would be for the fifth chapter. If we're going by what happened in Danganronpa 1, there wasn't really like an actual actual motive for that chapter, Junko just decided to set up Kirigiri so that she could get rid of her. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a mastermind and then see if maybe I can think of a way as to why Maizano ended up killing Celeste and how like the mastermind might like interfere with that, you know what I mean? So we're gonna go ahead and spin it, baby! Who was the mastermind? Oh my god, Fukawa is the mastermind. I mean, I think Fukawa is an interesting choice for a mastermind because she has that like genocide jack part of her personality. It would be so screwed up, yeah, if it was like just that side of her personality that put together the game and like she didn't even realize it really until like um, the final chapter when genocide jack like finally reveals herself. That would be crazy. But yeah, um, now I can kind of maybe see if I can figure out a reason as to why Maizano and Celeste would kill each other in chapter five. Okay, so my idea is in chapter five, the mastermind is still trying to get rid of Kirigiri because she's super smart and now she's the protagonist. So hey, she's got a Nahoge too. And with a Nahoge comes a lot of power. So the mastermind's trying to get rid of Kirigiri. So instead of framing Kirigiri for murder, instead they decide to be open and honest with the students and say, hey, if you kill Kirigiri, I'll let you off free. So do like a first blood perk, but just if you kill Kirigiri. If we use Maizano and Celestia's like canon 
and personalities. They're definitely two characters who are willing to kill for kind of more selfish reasons, you know? Celeste in order to fulfill her dream. And although Maisano wanted to kill to like join her friends again and to make sure that they were okay, she was willing to sacrifice like everybody's lives in the killing game to do that. So I feel like you could argue that it's pretty selfish overall. So the way I imagine it is they're both trying to like stalk her and stuff. So then Maisano sees Celeste spying on her as well. And maybe she can approach her and be like, hey, what if we work together to kill her? Then hey, who knows, maybe we can both get out of here. But I would like to think that Maisano is lying in this situation. And she just agrees to join Celeste so that she can keep like a better eye on her and kind of like same vice versa. They both don't trust each other and just want to keep an eye on each other so that they can like individually get the kill and get out of there. But at some point, one of them could take it too far. Like maybe Celeste like knocks Maisano out by like breaking a bottle over her head or something and then ties her up. And that's when Maisano is like, okay, this is starting to get really real. And she realizes that, hey, Celestia is a lot smarter than her when it comes to this kind of stuff. She's a lot more manipulative. Then Maisano finds a way to get out of the rope, whether she bites it off or she finds something in the room to use in order to cut it. She's able to release herself from being tied up. And that's when she realizes, hey, I gotta kill Celeste before she tries to do something like this again. And then she thinks, hey, maybe if I kill Celeste and then I kill Kira Gary afterwards, I can still get the first blood perk. And that's kind of what she's banking on. So she finds Celeste while she is still trying to track down Kirigiri. She kills her, but before she's able to kill Kirigiri, three people find the body, and then there's just not really a good time to actually kill Kirigiri. So she decides to try to cover up the murder. That's about the best scenario that I can come up with <laughs> in terms of that murder scheme. As for Fukawa being the mastermind, I definitely do think it makes the most sense for like genocide or to be the part of her personality that's mainly the mastermind. I would say that that maybe Fukawa felt like really especially um, outcasted by her classmates and decided to get revenge on them through this killing game. And it was that split personality in her head of genocider being like, do it, do it, they all hate you. Like you have to get revenge on them. So I think it would mostly be genocider who was the one to put it together. And in this version, I'd want Toko to be like somewhat complicit with the killing game, but she didn't really want to go this far, you know? It was mostly genocider and that personality that just like kept pushing her and pushing her to help her with it. So eventually she just kind of went along with it since genocider is like the stronger personality. But yeah, this will conclude the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was probably pretty meme-y. <laughs> But I hope you guys got a good laugh out of it and um, enjoyed this little mini killing game that we had. And yeah, if you guys would be interested in me doing um, characters from Danganronpa 2 or doing characters from Mirror to Die, I think that'd be really fun. For um, Mirror to Die especially, we could like roll for different card assignments that people would have. And I think that would be pretty uh, exciting. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, once again, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe. It really does help me out a ton. And yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. And I will see you real soon.